This is Democracy Now!, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Democrats are moving forward on President Biden's $1.9 trillion proposed stimulus package as the United States faces a staggering economic crisis. They plan to use the budget reconciliation process to pass the bill, despite Republican opposition allowing the legislation to take effect before March 14th, when key unemployment programs expire. There are still some hurdles to be worked out. Biden has said he's open to negotiating eligibility for receiving $1,400 direct payments included in the bill. But on Saturday, Senator Bernie Sanders, the new chair of the Senate Budget Committee, tweeted his opposition to cutting the income threshold, writing, quote, unbelievable. There are some Dems who want to lower the income eligibility for direct payments from $75,000 to $50,000 for individuals and $150,000 to $100,000 for couples. In other words, working-class people who got checks from Trump would not get them from Biden. Brilliant, unquote. Senator Sanders elaborated Sunday on CNN's State of the Union. What we have done in the past and what we have promised the American people, we've said two things uh, in the last month. We said we're going to get you $2,000, that's $600 plus $1,400. And what we're going to do is say that everybody, a single person, individual, 75,000 or lower, and a couple of $150,000 or lower will be eligible for that full $2,000, 600 plus 1,400. Now, when people said, we don't want rich people to get uh, that benefit, I understand that, I agree. And what we need to do is have a strong cliff so it doesn't kind of spill over to people making $300,000. This comes as billionaires' wealth in the United States grew by almost 40 percent during the pandemic, increasing by more than $1.1 trillion. Biden's stimulus bill is also set to include a $400 per week jobless benefit through September and $30 billion for rent and utility assistance. This comes as data shows women lost about five and a half million jobs over the course of the first 10 months of the pandemic, nearly one million more jobs lost than men. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen spoke about the staggering number of women who've left the workforce since the pandemic began when she appeared Sunday on CBS's Face the Nation. The American Rescue Package that President Biden has proposed um, really addresses the problems that women face. It places huge emphasis on getting our schools open safely, getting children um, back into school, um, providing paid family and medical leave during uh, this crisis so that women um, don't have to leave their jobs when they're faced with health health issues or family issues that they have to address. There's emphasis on providing more child care and, um, and payments, tax credits uh, expanded for children to help families address these needs. And I think this is really necessary um, to get women back to work. They've faced uh, a disproportionate burden because of this crisis, especially low-wage women women and women of color. Women of color are especially hard hit by job losses during the pandemic, with black, Latinx and Asian women accounting for all of women's job losses in December. Combined with women's increased responsibility for caregiving at home, it's a trend that could set women back decades and prompted our next guest to call this the first ever she session. C. Nicole Mason is the president and chief executive officer of the Institute for Women's Policy Research, a leading voice on pay equity, economic policies and research impacting women. Uh, she's quoted in um, a section of The New York Times that came out on Sunday, the whole section, America's mothers are in crisis, is anyone listening to them? Uh, C. Nicole Mason, thanks so much for being with us. Um, can you talk about what this economic crisis means for women, what a she-session, your term, is? 
So this is a historic moment. We have not witnessed a moment like this ever in U.S. history. So the siege session is about making sure that we understand that women have been disproportionately impacted by job and income losses during the pandemic and during this economic downturn. And the reason for this is that is because women are overrepresented in the hardest hit sectors, service, leisure, hospitality, education, and healthcare services have been hit hardest uh, during this downturn, disproportionately impacting, again, low-wage workers and women of color. So talk about why women are so hard hit right now and how in this country this is really being overlooked, certainly not by the women themselves who are being crushed, losing their jobs, having to care for parents, having to care for children, what this means, setting women back decades. So what this means is, so the reason why women, like I said, are disproportionately impacted is because they're overrepresented in hardest hit sectors. And when jobs, when stay at homes orders were implemented, uh, businesses closed down, and that disproportionately impacted women. And then also schools and daycares closed down. So women had this real, had this dual burden of um, providing for their families and earning a living, but also um, caretaking responsibilities. So um, in, in the beginning, I don't really believe that we really took it seriously in terms of the impact of school closures on working women. Um, but we saw, for example, in August, 865,000 women fell out of the workforce. And people asked me, they said, well, you know, why do you think that is? I said, it's, no, it's a no-brainer. Uh, schools were set, were supposed to open in August and September, and they did it, and women had to make some tough choices. You wrote in a recent piece, um, at the first of the year, we celebrated women's economic gains when they made up a little more than 50 percent of the workforce. The pandemic has all but wiped out those gains and made it more difficult for women to reenter the workforce and sustain employment. Mm -hmm. Explain. So, so so again, and, and at the beginning of the year, in 2020, uh, in January, we were celebrating this milestone. And then the pandemic hit, and more than 2 million women uh, fell out of the workforce uh, four times at four times the rate than men. In 2008, when the economic recession hit, it mainly impacted manufacturing production uh, and construction, again, disproportionately impacting men. So, but this time around, not only were women losing jobs at a clip, they were also managing uh, virtual learning with their um, with their children. And women were told during this time, and when, you know, like, oh, you'll figure it out. Oh, it's not that big a deal. And we, in terms of reopening and stay at home orders, we put a lot of focus on small businesses, which I think is right. But there was very little attention paid to getting school clo schools open. And so that has had a disproportionate impact on women because uh, without schools and daycares and the pandemic under control, they will continue and have continued to fall out of the workforce. So, as this debate on the $1.9 trillion um, uh, COVID crisis, economic crisis package, uh, takes place, what is missing? What do you think needs to happen, particularly uh, to protect women? So there are a lot of good things in this that package. So you heard um, Janet Yellen talking about all the good things in there or smart things in there for women. Um, you know the uh, expanded unemployment insurance, the housing and food sap, food assistance assist. Um, uh, monies in there, uh, paid family and sick leave, all these things will go a long way towards ensuring women who cannot reenter the workforce because of caretaking responsibilities or simply can't find a job because many women have been unemployed for 27 weeks or more, that they have a lifeline. So that's really important. And I think the second part of the stimulus package, which we'll see, I think, in the coming weeks and months, is job creation. So there'll be a concerted effort on job creation. And oftentimes, like in 2008, there was a concerted effort around um, infrastructure, you know, production, manufacturing, getting people back to work. This time around, we're going to need to focus on those hardest hit sectors where women have been um, most affected and impacted, and then also dedicate some funds to education and training. Because, you know, to be honest, uh, Amy, some of those jobs that we lost are not going to be able to come back. And so women will have to enter new sectors altogether.
Hmm. And what about the $15 minimum wage increase that was included in Biden's stimulus bill proposal? Some say it cannot be included um, uh, if Democrats want to use the reconciliation process to pass it, because that rule can only be used for bills concerning spending, taxes and debt. But Senator Bernie Sanders, chair of the Budget Committee, argued um, uh, that it does comply with the budget reconciliation process. Can you comment? So the, the $15 minimum wage is long overdue. Raising the minimum wage is long overdue. And right now, um, I don't want to choose political expediency over what you know, the right thing to do. Um, but I will say, Amy, that 15, raising the minimum wage to $15 is only a big, a small part of this this deal here. We also need to make sure that these jobs are quality jobs, because what the, the most devastating thing uh, during the pandemic is that even when women lost their jobs, they also didn't have paid sick leave. They didn't have other benefits that we know make the difference for working families. And so in addition to the $15 an hour, we also need to make sure that they have paid and family sick leave and also have better job security uh, and, and flexibility. All these things were critical issues during the pandemic and for working women.